All right, and I think we're recording. All right, hey everyone. So this channel is dedicated to debunking some of the recommendations, commercials, products, services, anything out there that we think is just total junk. We're not gonna always criticize things and laugh and make fun, but today we're gonna criticize something. A lot of people have been recommending these TP-Link wireless access points. And I have to tell you with 25 years of IT experience, these things are terrible. So I want to show you where mine is set up. As you can see it right over there, it is active and ready, hard lined in with Cat5e cable straight back to a switch. From that switch, it's wired straight back to our main AT&T router. So I want to show you where that AT&T router is. So the reason why I'm walking and showing this in the whole video is that you can see how far away the main router is and where it's buried. Why is this such a big deal? It's such a big deal because people like to debunk things. So take a look at that. It is buried inside of a structured cable box. How could that be any good for signal? It's probably not. But let's do a speed test. Right now, I am connected to our AT&T access point, or excuse me, AT&T Wi-Fi router right there that I just showed you. And from my little Surface laptop, I'm about five feet. I'm going to hit a speed test. Just so you know, I have AT&T fiber, 500 up, 500 down. So with 500 up and 500 down on a wireless laptop, a wireless surface laptop, I'm getting 538 down, 289 up. So right now there is probably 15 connected devices on my network. Not all of them are doing anything, but my wife is streaming a video. My daughter is on the internet on her phone and I am on the internet here on this laptop. So everyone's going to say it's about the devices, but nothing is going to change. So really quick, we are going to flip and let's see if it will continue recording while I flip to the other access. So we're going to test these in tandem. In tandem. We're going to test these in each of their locations. So where is my... DRI test is my test network for the TP link. I'm going to hit connect. I am now connected and secured. So Let's run a test again. Now I am I'm the exact opposite distance from where we started. And at that distance, I'm 200 down and looks to be about 90, 97 up. So I'm going to walk all the way back to there. So we can get some sort of idea of our signals and our speeds. Obviously, as I get closer to the access point, as you can see, sit down back at my couch, which is about nine feet away, eight feet away. I'm going to run our test again.
All right. So as you can see, I'm getting better up and down speeds when I'm pretty much in a direct line of sight, eight feet away from that deco. So now I'm going to switch over to my AT&T. <clears throat> All right, now I'm on my AT&T network and let's see how far it drops off. All right, so as you can see, the download speeds didn't drop off at all. The upload did drop off a little bit in comparison to the TP link. So I think we can start to make some assumptions here. I'm the exact opposite distance away from my AT&T wireless router, getting almost the exact same speeds, right? So what does this tell us so far? Well, it tells us that direct line of sight to the TP link is going to yield the best results. However, let's make this a little bit more interesting. I'm going to now walk down this hallway, okay? Nothing really in the way. That's where I just came from, and we're going to run the same exact test connected to AT&T. Okay, as you can see, still great speeds. Let's flip over to our TP link connection. All right, now connected to TP link, let's run our test. Looks like it's already dropped off by almost 50%, 40% uploads dropped off quite significantly. I'd say that's about a third. So I think, I think it's pretty straightforward. All right, so now we're gonna go outside and it's gonna be technically outside is closer to much, much closer to the TP-Link device <clears throat> than it is my AT&T wireless router that is buried, again, in that structured cabinet in a closet in my bedroom. All right, here we are just at the garage door. I'm not gonna disconnect. I'm just gonna run this test on the TP-Link. All right, so TP-Link from here as you can see in through that window is the TP link device. Pretty good speeds. I would imagine my AT&T should drop off significantly. Okay, I'm gonna check my AT&T. Now, to note my AT&T, the signal bars has dropped off down to two. So I'm gonna assume it's gonna be pretty bad. As I expected, the signal's really bad, which is what I'm trying to solve. And everyone say, well, you've solved it. The TP link is much better distance out to your garage. Right, if only my office was in the garage, it's not. 
So we're going to walk back inside and I'm going to show you what the real problem is. Run this test again as we're walking. Still connect to at t Starts to increase as I walk into the house. Increase even further. I step into my office. Speeds are totally fine. And I'm using the same exact device. Each and every time, I want to make sure I'm using the same exact device, same exact wireless. Now I'm going to switch over to the TP-Link, which again, I mean, maybe one door for line of sight, 25, 30 feet away. And remember, you saw where my AT&T was buried, in a closet, in a structured cabinet, surrounded by metal. So now I'm connected to DRI test, which is our TP link. Let's see if it can beat it. Horrible. This is my office. This is like the garage for the AT&T. This is terrible. So as it's running this test, I want to show you. Sanding up. Glass door. Right down there is the TP link. It's this distance and a door and it drops off. This is why I wouldn't recommend any TP link access point or for that matter, probably their wireless routers. Now, this is the third TP-Link device I've tested. Tomorrow, I'm gonna test Ubiquiti AC access point versus Meraki. And we're gonna see and do some comparisons and we can also look back and compare it to what we did today with TP-Link. So whatever you hear about TP-Link and their products, not worth it. All right, so this is the Deco device, the X20, that I ran the test on. You know, I get it. I know that they're supposed to be used as a mesh, but point being is it's not giving me any better speeds or signals um, outside of using it at my garage, which... I don't really care about. So these are not worth it, in my opinion. So don't let anyone convince you that they are. There's probably much better higher end devices that you spend the money on are going to be worth it. You know, I don't know if you want to get six of these things and spread them around across your house. You know, it looks like you can get a three pack of some of these. My opinion I don't think they're worth it, but maybe if you're on a budget, it'll get the job done if you get enough of them. This other device that I tested the day prior, I didn't review this one, didn't even want to bother. It was terrible. I stood about seven feet from it, and my speeds were about a quarter of my AT&T from the exact same distance. Um, this device was just terrible. Um, and I see no practical use for this anywhere. Um, I mean, even when I was connected to it from two feet away, I barely got 50% of my speeds. So can't rep recommend this TP-Link EAP615 wall, Omada. Everyone talks about the Omada Wi-Fi system. <laughs> I mean, if someone wants to challenge me on this, I'll set up a whole network on these garbage devices. And I'll do the same with the decos. Um, but again, can't recommend anything from TP-Link besides maybe a cheap switch. Um, they do have cheap switching hardware, which I use for like small under the desk environments. But no, would never use these ever. So good luck to those who are recommending them. I don't know how you get views on your YouTube channels for people recommending this garbage.